Blood. People take this drug and alcohol addiction thing way too lightly nowadays, you know. Man, them watching this right now, you can literally lose your gal because you burn too much weed, you know. I meet gal on a daily, blood. I met a girl today, fam. She says she had to drop out two of her boyfriends in the past because they burn too much weed. Certain men are under the illusion, certain men are deluded and feel like just because they work and they're on the right path and they're on a legit thing, it enables them to sit around after working hours at home burning weed. Fam, you lose points, blood. Yeah, you're on the right path, you're on a legit thing. But if when your girl comes home from work and she sees you sitting around burning weed, blood, you lose points, fam. It's the same thing with man sitting around after working hours or on the weekend and that, playing video games. It's the same thing with man just, you get me, drinking alcohol and getting wasted every night after work. And really and truly, no girl of quality is going to put up with that for long. Certain girl out here, trust me fam, there's girl out here that have standards. I'm not these deluded chicks that, I'm not talking about these deluded chicks. Certain girl have standards, you know, like, bro, if a guy buns weed, if he drinks too much alcohol, I ain't even going to talk to him. You might as well be ugly. I don't care how much money you got. If you sit around and bun weed all day, I'm not interested. The problem is the man them talk to too much ratchet gal and that that are just used to man that are not doing nothing with them lives and that, their lives and that I feel like it's normal. We take this, this drug and alcohol addiction thing way too lightly and that. Like there's certain people out here, they bun weed every fucking day to the point where like they don't even get high off a of weed or skunk no more, you know. Like literally, there's some people who they'll be at work. And they'll say to themselves, like, yeah, I can't wait to go home and bum weed and that. Okay, I'm not going to say that's cool. I'm not promoting no weed smoking, innit? But there's certain people, they'll be at work and they say, yeah, boom, can't wait to go home and bun a zoo. But there's some people, when they get up in the morning, they need to bun a zoo to feel normal, to function. That's when you've got a serious problem, my brother. Similarly, there's certain people, they carry a little bottle of whatever in it, whiskey on them. And they take a little sip here and there throughout the day and they call it medicine. They, they feel like this is something that's good for them. It's not good for you, blood. You, gotta, you are an entry-level alcoholic. If every day you even have one beer, even if, it's every, even if it's only one beer, every day you have one beer or you have one glass of wine or whatever in it, you are entry-level alcoholic. I know a man. Cool brother. But you burn weed every day, fam. Every day. And I remember some little function that we went to outside of London. Like, around, like, St. Albans and that. It's a heart for sure. And I don't know. Maybe he didn't bring it with him. Or he lost it somehow. I don't know. We jumped out the car after, like, a 45-minute journey. Oh, where's my weed, blood? I never see a man. Like, my man was like, hey, everyone, everyone jump out the car, innit, yeah? My man's all looking underneath the fucking foot mats and them things there. Like, you know, what man's like, I'm like, bro, how am I moving like that? I never see a man move like that over a little 10 bag of weed. I think to myself, like, blood, all right, we're out of the ends. So obviously you don't know no one and that. We're going to be at this function for like six hours and that. You can't go six hours without weed, blood. Because I know you've been burning. My man, you know them type of man, they burn weed all day long and that. So I know you had a couple splits. That day, in the morning, in the early afternoon and that. So you should be good, fam, for the next eight hours. Nah, fam. My man's thinking about phoning up people and flying back. What? Fam, you got a problem, blood. You should be able to function and go about your day without weed. Man, if you burn... You, you know, you know if you're burning too much weed, man. Then. I'm saying, man, if you're not burning weed at all, but you know you're burning too much weed, fam. It's going to cost you in some way, shape or form, blood. Either you're gonna do you're gonna do some illegal activity to get what you need to get. You're gonna lose your gyal. You're gonna lose your job. There's people out here right now losing their jobs over weed. Come on, the man them that do construction and that. And even if you work in a police force, I ain't got no Jake's over here watching. But they do piss tests for people in certain uh, workplaces and that. I've never had to do it for some reason. The man's always. I'm not, I'm not saying dodged it because it's nothing to dodge. You get me? I, I could I could do a piss test right now and it could trace back 30 years. There'll be nothing in my system, yeah? But no no alcohol, no drugs, literally. No weed, no fentanyl, nothing, fam. No horse tranquilizer. 
Um, there's people right now on construction site losing their jobs because I don't know how long weed stays in your system for, but you're supposed to be drug and alcohol free and that. Now, I've met man on construction site. One of my supervisors, you know, white man, they can't have a conversation with you and stand two meters away. They need to stand right up here in your face. <laughs> one uh, supervisor, one Scottish guy. My man, I'm chatting to him. And yeah, you know, I told you, them man, they like to stand close and that. Them man, they don't know how to, you get me, give you personal space and that. Boom. I can smell alcohol on his breath. I think to myself, either this guy had a drink in the morning before he came to work or he didn't brush his teeth. I don't know what's, what's worse, blood. And certain people, they wake up in the morning, what they call it, is it fucking whiskey and cornflakes and that? That's no joke. That is no joke. You got a problem and you got an issue, blood. It's gonna catch up on you one day, fam. You're gonna lose something if you have a, a, a terrible or well, a, a bad alcohol and drug addiction. And that. You're either gonna put yourself in a position where you're committing crimes and that. You're gonna lose your gal. I'm not saying you should be afraid to lose your gal, but what a dumb thing to lose your gal over, innit? Or you're gonna end up losing jobs and that. People ain't gonna wanna hang around with you. Blood, I'm not hanging around with no one that buns weed like that, blood. No one whose house I go to to sit down in buns weed. Why would I want to go to someone's yard and come out smelling like weed? I made that video, the anti-social one. And I see man coming underneath the comment section that when I'm talking about, ah, oh, if I took my little sister to someone's yard and they're swearing and I'll tell them like, yo, allow the swearing in front of my little sister, innit? Politely, obviously, I ain't gonna start, I ain't, well, obviously, I ain't gonna start swearing, I ain't gonna start shouting. But I say, yo, my sister's here, innit? Like, lie, innit? Man coming underneath, underneath the comment section talking about, blood, I understand, like, if people come to your house and they're swearing in front of your sister, but how are you going to the next people's house and telling them to not swear in front of your sister? Yeah. Yeah, fam. A man will be shocked to know that I go to the tenants' houses on this contract. And if they start smoking in front of me, I ask them politely, yo, I don't smoke. Do you mind waiting until I'm done? Yeah, I've got like 30 minutes left or whatever. A man will be shocked. A man probably watch this right now and be like, nah, how dare you? Fam, you, come on, you got to respect people, innit? Respect me that I don't want to sit in your yard or stand in your yard and come out smelling a weed or smelling a cigarette and that. Yeah, I don't go to people's houses that bun weed. I don't hang around with people that bun weed like that. Man. I've linked up with man. You get me? And it's just like, obviously, I get if a man just, you get me, one, two puffs and that beforehand and that. But like, I, I don't want to be talking to a zombie. It's bad enough. I ain't got man around me that's really, you understand? On the ball, gra grabbing life by the horns and really trying to do shit and that so definitely i don't want to be hanging around with someone that's burning weed blood it's long fam it's long I, obviously i get something set up man you get me they say oh you get me when they when they bum weed and that it gets them in the zone to start rapping and that whatever and it may be but still man i'd rather not hang around with people that are bunny weed man i want to be hanging around with people with a clear head people look at you different when you bun weed and that like i said you know, they're like the certain gal, like, they're, they're just going to disqualify you off the bat if you burn weed and that. Like, literally, I was even chatting to my mum about this. Like I said, man's drug and alcohol free. My mum regards me so high up on the totem pole as she should, as your mum should. Your mum should be proud of you, fam. My mum puts me so up on the top, so high up on the totem pole. I said to my mum, mum, if I started burning weed, would you lose respect for me? She was like, yeah, I, I would. Yeah. I'm, I'm, I'm glad that my mum would lose respect for me if I started burning weed because that just lets me know that my mum regards me like up here fam even my girl if I said imagine imagine I started burning weed how would you feel she's like nah she could never see me burning weed like yeah me when I tell her certain stories about certain get me dealings and rare 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 I wrote about it in my book she's like I can't believe that's you Jay innit like I can't understand like you fighting and that because she knows what I'm like innit yeah like I can understand you being in a gang but like the weed thing and that, nah or that you get me the, the peddling food and that nah nah man but man them need to stop burning weed man cut it down obviously you can't you can't just go cold turkey obviously in it like, literally man need to cut it out in it cut it down me i would disqualify a girl because she burns weed yeah i think to myself yeah man you get me a little fun thing whatever in it but other than that nah fam if i if i was to if i said to myself all right boom this thing is like got a life in order, uh, you get me, and she's a hot thing and that. I mean, I don't see, I, I mean, I don't feel like there's any girls that really exist that really got their life in order, like a lawyer, 
and they're pretty and they bun weed. I, I don't feel like it exists in here. Someone put down in the comment section if that exists. But imagine if I met a girl who's a lawyer, had their life in order and they're a hot thing and that. If they bun weed, fam, I'll think to myself like, all right, cool. You need to have stopped burning weed yesterday, innit? Like, I'm not going to be dealing with no girl. I, I, I cannot be in a relationship with a girl that phones, has the weed guy that she chats to. That, you get me, comes to her yard. What? Nah, fam. See, this is why I'm so glad I've got a girl hating on a ratchet nest, blood. I'm not dealing with no thing that burns weed, fam. It's long, blood. It's long, it's long, it's long. How can I be of a... You see, man them are supposed to be more ratchet and worse than the gal them. The gal them are supposed to be more... You understand what I'm saying? Like, of more quality than the man them in terms of just their behaviour, like, what they're up to and that. So, if, any, if anyone buns weed and that, it should be the guy. I'm saying man them don't bun weed at all, innit? But it's bad if the chick buns weed. I feel like if a guy don't bun weed and his girl buns weed, I feel like that guy is just settling, to be fair. If anyone's bunning weed... Not that I'm condoning the man them or promoting the man them bun weed. It should be the man them. Gallim should not be bunning weed. If I had a girl who had some alcohol, secret alcohol addiction, boy, you better pattern up. Or oh, pack your bags, boy. Keep it moving. I'm not dealing with no girl. You get me? I know someone that knows someone. You get me? There are people that lose their job all the time because they're drinking alcohol. We could get stopped by the police. You feel like you're sober, but your blood alcohol level don't tell, don't, don't, don't paint the same picture. Yeah, there's certain people they can drink whatever amounts of alcohol and, and they're sober. They actually are sober, they're functional, they can stand on one foot. You understand what I'm saying? But their blood alcohol content, when they do the breathalyzer test, says that they're not sober. I remember when I was working for Homes of Haringey, one of the trade unions and that, he said, guys, Right, I'm hoping obviously you lot don't drink alcohol in the morning and that, but you lot need to be careful even the night before, you lot might drink so much alcohol that it's still in your system the next day, obviously. And when the breath, when the because the police were pulling over vans, they weren't even going for the, the road dudes or the man that looked sus, they were pulling over vans and that because they know van man or white man, pub man. So, them man there might have been probably drinking the night before. You're saying that if you lot drink too much alcohol the night before, yeah, you feel sober, you feel functional in the morning, but your blood alcohol content level don't say that, fam. And you can lose your job. Because if they, if they, if they, if you, I don't know what happens when you get caught drink driving and that over the limit, but I'm assuming that you could lose your license, if not get bare points and that. And let's say you have a few points already. Let's say you have three or six points for using your phone. Then you get another six or nine points and that. Bam, license gone. How are you going to be an electrician and that working for Homes of Haringey and you can't drive a van? You can lose your job. Obviously, they might make allowances for you and say, OK, boom, you, you're on a driving van for 12 months, for a year or whatever. So you can, all, you can go and work with other people and that. But let's say, for example, you go for an, a new job because you've lost that job. When they ask you, you've got a clean license and you have to come clean and say, yo, you know, um, I was a drink driver and that, and I lost my license and that. Imagine going for a job interview and having to disclose that information to your employer. They're going to think, well, why am I going to take you on? You can't drive a van, so now you're a hindrance and you've shown us that, you know, you're not responsible enough to manage your drink and that. You should have called in sick the day that you decided to go into work because you've been drinking too much alcohol and that. They're going to think, nah, nah, man, this person's a liability, this person's a hindrance and that. So you know what? Let me interview these 12 people first and then I'll let you know when it, how it goes. Too much implications with being over the limit, drinking too much alcohol, drinking too much, uh, smoking too much weed and that. I know, man. Man that I know. The coolest brothers ever. The man they drink, though, every day and that. And I've heard stories like, man that I know, you would never think that this person's like that. I've heard stories, man going out, Get yeah, me to the pub or whatever, innit? Going to a local bar. And they're a big man, though, innit? Going into a bar and that. And obviously, there's two men. So one man's naturally going to be walking in front. Single file, you know? And you know, like, when you're walking in front, you're walking ahead. But you can feel like there's no one behind you and that. Where's my man? My man's there standing toe to toe with the doorman and that. He's not like that, you know? My man's not like that. You ever meet the man in person when he's sober or just even had a few drinks and that's cool? But certain people... 
when they're out and about and that and they've been drinking and they turn violent they get themselves into old uh, they turn confrontational and that and the same man i know got rushed in a pub one time had too much drinks took it too much man jumped on him stepped on him that's it Bass him up Bass him ras clout up and then certain man drink too much alcohol start putting their hands on gal now you got a sentence from now you're going to be sitting down because the judge is there and the jury and that sick and tired of hearing about this domestic violence shit. One in three women in domestic violence situations and uh, the judge will have you sitting down, fam. So don't do it, fam. It's just not worth it, man. Like, find things that, you know... I think the main thing behind like the drug and alcohol addiction and that... It's an escape. It's an escape. I think people that burn weed and drink alcohol and that they feel like their problems are going to be solved. Or it's a, it's a diversion... When, they, when they're intoxicated and that, it's an escape. They feel like drinking the alcohol and that's going to take their mind off the problem and that it's not. Temporarily, yeah. But unless you fix the problem, you solve the problem, you're still going to be in that rut. You're still going to be in that in that problem. This is the main reason why, and I made a video about this, I don't think I released it yet, why people want to go on holiday and that. They're not happy in their situation and that. That's why some people are desperate to get to go to Jamaica or wherever in it, yeah, Bali and these places, Dubai and that. They don't love their life. Me, I love everything about my life. I don't feel like I need to go on holiday. My holiday is going Edmonton on the weekend, blood. Yeah? Like, I don't feel like I need to... Listen, blood, I've got a fucking property in Egypt, a studio flat. I've had it since the old 16 December, basically 2017 January. So what? Boom, six years. It's 2023 February, yeah? I ain't in no rush. To go to fucking Egypt. Yeah. Furthermore, the last time I went on holiday was in 016 as well. In September. I went to Prague. Came back. Then I went to Dubai. The only reason why I went on holiday is because one of my brethren booked it. If it weren't for him, I wouldn't have gone on holiday. I don't care. I don't need to escape from England. I have no problems. I love my life. People them that feel like they need to go on holiday constantly. They don't love their life. They want to escape their problems. But the problem is they are the problem. Chatting to someone I know the other day, they're talking about someone that we know are. Oh, they want to move to California. This person's never even been to America, let alone California. What do you mean you want to go? That's how I understand these kids. These people with this dumb mentality talking about, oh, I want to move country now. Why do you want to move country for? So there's a reason for everything. The reason why someone want to move country is because things that's going in the UK for them. Well, there's no there's nothing that's going in. They're not happy in their situation. They watch too much TV, too much ATL, too much of these programs and that Kim Kardashian and you know what I'm saying in it yeah and feel like there's certain people right now they feel like if they move to America all their problems are going to be solved and that they feel like okay they're going to be in a limousine that's going to take them to Heathrow airport they're not going to ride economy or business class or even first class there's going to be a private jet with fucking champagne and that then they're going to land on the runway then there's going to be a fucking Rolls Royce Phantom waiting for them and then they're going to go to their penthouse and just party the night away and that Literally, there are people that believe that that's going to happen. They don't actually believe. Like, I know someone as well. They had a leaving party. They made all of us waste our time going to this dumb leaving party because they wanted to go to America. No plan, you know. They're just going to wing it. That's what they said. Words then come out of their mouth. I'm just going to wing it. Everything's going to work out. Within 12 months, within a year, they was back in the UK. Not achieved a damn thing. Don't get it twisted. If they wanted to go to America or wherever in it, yeah, to do hiking or whatever and it, climb the Rocky Mountains, do that. But don't just go somewhere with no plan and just, oh, I'm just going to wing it. you got issues in your country. you got issues in your surrounding area. You need to fix your fucking issues and that. You're in London. You're in a land opportunity. If you're in some slow dead town like Northampton, then yeah, man for escape. Man for branch out and that. But you're in London, one of the best cities in the world. Blood, there's so much opportunity in that. If you're not doing well for yourself, you're not getting nowhere... More than likely, it's a you problem. It ain't the surrounding area's problem. Yeah, this video's gone on way too long. Get me. Um, but it is what it is, isn't it? Yeah, man, dropping some gems. Stay worse. Done, though.